Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, we have services where we can't get to the service. <laughs> wow, God is good. Amen. I, I asked the Lord that he would cause services to be in such a way where I don't get to preach my messages. <laughs> I think I'm reaping the fruit of that prayer. That or we need to stop the clock, you know what I mean? <laughs> Amen. Well, God is good. God is good. I have 13 minutes, and I'm going to go for it. Yeah? I'm going to go for it. <clears throat> we are continuing our series on Ephesians. Um, and we're talking about walking in Christ, and what that means is our behavior, our conduct, our lifestyle, as a result of what Jesus has done for us. Right? As a result of the love that he's poured into our hearts that begins to transform our life. Fred said it so well that it is impossible to stay the same when we encounter Jesus. There's a transformation of the heart that takes place every time we encounter the Lord. Now, our character is the evidence of maturity in Christ. Our character is the evidence of our progressive growth. It's a visible thing that people can see as a result of the inner work that God is doing. Amen? And in fact, our relationship with God is affected by the way we treat other people. Our relationship with God is hindered, limited. So if I'm pursuing God, God's first um, passion or desire is not to just use me, but to transform me. Amen? It's not that God overlooks the things that are hindering my relationship with him and says, I just want to use you. It's not about God looking for people to use. God is looking for people to know. Amen? God is pursuing intimate relationship. God is pursuing a connection and a union with his people. He doesn't overlook that when we come to God. And so in my mind, when I come and I enter his presence, he deals with those things in his presence. Right? His presence is like light that exposes those areas of my life. And the Bible says that as we come with unveiled faces, we are being transformed into his image, into his likeness. We go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. In other words, when we come into the presence of God, we are being transformed. And that process is I'm becoming more and more and more like Jesus. Now, uh, you know, people, certain people claim that they've arrived the day they got saved. You know, and are you, you, you guys ever heard this phrase? It's all Jesus. You try to give somebody a compliment and they respond, it's all Jesus. And you're like, man, if it was all Jesus, it'd be so much better than that, you know. <laughs> I, was just trying to, I was just trying to encourage the process and you ruined it, you know. <laughs> it's not all Jesus, right? Sometimes our character comes out, but you know, Jesus is the intercessor, you know, the intercessor is Jesus is not out there with a magnifying glass looking for your first mistake. Jesus is not the condemner. Jesus said, I did not come to condemn, but I came to save. He came to save a fallen world. He came to save a fallen world that is in darkness, that is full of evil, and that is our carnal flesh. Right? We cannot glorify God in the flesh. We cannot please God in the flesh. So Jesus didn't come to condemn. Jesus came to save. The word intercessor, which is something that Jesus is doing today, 24 hours a day, means to come in between. Jesus, after we are born again, he comes in between our life. And you know what? He's present in the process. And he's patient. But the fact remains the same, that if we claim to grow in God, we are being changed. 
We can't grow in God and stay the same. We can't grow in God and, you know, stay in the same issues. There's a transformation that takes place when I take new levels in my relationship with Jesus. And I, I just want to give a couple points. And again, we're going back to Ephesians um, 5.17. Is that, is that 5.17? With the Lord's authority, I say this. Yeah? Is that 5.17 or 4.17? Uh, for, maybe 4.17 or 5.17. One of those. <clears throat> Live no longer as Gentiles do. For they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasures and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. Uh, watch this. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned. Say with me, learned. Do you see, that is a process. You heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. Okay? That is not a supernatural gift. That is a process, a commitment to studying the scripture in which truth is revealed. Okay? That process is connected to the renewing of the mind. Truth always washes our mind. Truth always transforms the way we think. That is the source of every change of heart. You cannot have a transformation of heart without having a change of mind. Because if the change didn't reach your mind, you will produce the same evil out of your mind. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So he says... Since you heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, throw off. Say it with an attitude. Throw off. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life. Okay? It doesn't say fix. It doesn't say Try to manage. It says, throw off. Throw off. You know why? We are born again and are called to live out of our new nature, not our old nature. It's hard to live for God in our old nature. It's hard to walk in faith in our old nature. So the Bible says, since you have learned the truth that comes from throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life. And let me just say this. Every old nature is sinful. In, in fact, every person, no matter how good they think they are, are in need of a Savior. Every good person falls short of God's holiness. Every good person falls short of God's standard. So he says, throw off your old sinful nature, form of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, say with me, instead. Instead. This is so big. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Again, pointing to real source of transformation. Thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So it gives us a couple things here. We're going to go into Matthew uh, chapter 5 um, as we continue this series and talk about how do, we, how do we look at this change and how do we look at this standard and through what. But look at the things we're looking at this morning. In Matthew 4, it says, If your eye causes you to sin... Pluck it out and cast it from you. Now, I'm not asking you to do that physically. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off 
and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. It's the way we ought to approach our old nature. It's the way we ought to consider who I used to be. I am crucified with Christ. I consider myself dead to my old life. I consider myself dead to sin and alive unto God. In Galatians it says that those who are Christ have crucified their flesh with his passions and desires. So I am to separate, not manage, not perfect, but separate my life, my new life in God from my old nature. I am to crucify. I am to cut off. But you know, I think that the source of our issues in life is connected to emptiness. You can't just cut things off, remove every evil, and think you're going to have victory. It's allowing the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the presence of God, to fill that void. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. It's allowing the Spirit of God be filled with the Holy Spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So when I cut off, I make space for God. When I remove, I make room for God. But the second thing that is just as important is to invite Him in. It's to say, Holy Spirit, this is now your room. You occupy this room. You be Lord of this room. You, you lead this room of my life, of my heart. It says, cut off. What a brutal approach. But he says, it is more profitable for you. The Bible also says, what gain is it to you if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? You know, God, when it comes to your relationship with him, God is interested in you. God is just interested in you. God is dealing directly with you, with me. It's not about the nations. Nations come out of that, right? The, God's miracles flow out of that. God's power flows out of that. But God is directly interested in me. He wants to deal with me. When I come into God's presence, I got to yield my ear to hear because he wants to deal with me. He doesn't want to give me another revelation so that I can preach next Sunday. He doesn't want to give me words of knowledge. He wants to talk to me. He wants to deal with me. He wants to target my heart. He wants to deliver me. He wants to remove those things that are oppressing my life. That is his priority. A lot of times when we get into the presence of God, we become so self-righteous and we go after the nations and God's been waiting to talk to you. God's been waiting for your attention. God's been waiting to deal with you and you make it about the nations. You make it about the healings. You make it about, you know, deliverance and everybody else that needs to change. And God says, I'm actually calling uh, you to change. I'm calling you to change. The secret here is this, if you change, if I change, everything around me changes. If I change, my marriage changes. If I change, my kids change. If I change, my life group changes. If I change, my church changes. If I change, my city changes. If my city changes, then the country can change. If the country can change, then the nations can change. But change starts somewhere. Change doesn't start with this big idea of nations. Change starts right in the heart of a man. Right in the heart of a person. And, you know, we started this chapter a few Sundays ago where the Bible says, imitate God in all that you do. Almost like an impossible demand. Impossible without his presence. Right? How can I imitate God in everything that I do? Well, we do out of what we see. If we continue 
to stay in his presence and, and yield our heart and, and open our ears to hear and our eyes to see, we will naturally do out of our new nature like him. You see, the heart deals with something that you can't always control. Right? Out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaks. So self-righteousness is only righteous while you can control it. Right? And then, and then somebody says something to you and everybody says, oh, they shouldn't have gone there. Or somebody does something that causes what is in your heart to surface. And then you feel bad that everybody found out how ugly you really are. And you know, when people find out you're ugly on the inside, some of them might turn away. Some of them might reject you. But God knows exactly how you look on the inside and he loves you unconditionally. And he pursues you. And he longs for you. And he goes after you. Like the, like the shepherd. Like the shepherd who left the 99 and pursued the one that was lost. You know, that was me. I was the one. I was the one that was lost. And I'm so glad that Jesus is not like man. That when everybody else gives up, he doesn't give up. He left the 99 and pursued. Pursued the one that was lost. The Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says so many things. He says that we are salt. He says that we are light. And then he says, so let your light shine. Let your light shine before man. So that when they see your good works, your behavior, your conduct, they will glorify God. This is the way we glorify God. It's not just through raising our hands. It's not just through confessing the right things, but it's through the way we live our lives that honor Him, that worship Him, that represent Him, that, that reflect who He is to the dying world that we live in, to the world that's full of corruption and evil. You know what the Bible says? That the whole earth is crying out for the revelation of the sons. This is the time that God is calling us. Like he said in the prophet of Isaiah, arise and shine for the light has come. We are living in the fulfillment of this prophecy where God is saying arise and shine for your light has come. Amen. Would you stand to your feet with me? It says that we must throw off our old way of life, our former way of life, our old sinful nature, and instead let the Holy Spirit renew our thoughts and attitudes. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.22, flee from anything that stimulates youthful lust. You know what the eye in Matthew and the hand, they were things that gave access to sin. The eye was something that gave access for someone to lust. And Jesus is saying, gouge it out. If your hand is causing you sin, cut it off. Well, there's things in our life, you know what they do? They might not be directly sin, but they stimulate sin in our life. They stimulate those things that we don't wanna do that we end up doing. And the Word of God is instructing us, hey, be brutal with that thing. Get violent with that thing. That thing stands between you and God. That thing stands between you and your wife. That thing stands between you and your children. That stands between you and your destiny. Get violent with those areas of your life. And there's things in our life, if we were to allow the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts, that we can identify and say, you know what? That stimulates me. 
Maybe, maybe some of you, you're watching too, many, too much news and it stimulates anger in you and criticism. And you always go there and you end up having a bad attitude and you're, you're trying to save yourself from the world. It might look differently for everybody, but you know what? The Holy Spirit knows our heart. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to examine us and say, you know, those things that are causing me to sin, I want to cut them off. There's a grace for that in our life. The same grace that saved us, that same grace today teaches us how to live a holy life. Amen. His grace didn't leave us after it saved us. His grace is here in every step, in every moment of my life, teaching me how to be like Jesus, teaching me how to walk in Christ, how to be like him on this earth. And it says, instead, pursue righteous living. The message today is not to just throw off. The message today is to pursue the one who is the source of my sanctification, the source of my holiness, who's the only one that can transform my heart. I try to fix myself. I try to get better. I try to manage my anger. But there is one that can set me free, that can break the bondage, that can take the darkness out of my life. In fact, he transferred me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of his son. Amen.